Would you show your spouse or your children how much you love and care about them by showing them pictures of car accidents with blood on the road and severed limbs to remind them to be safe when they drive? On this episode, how using negative tools will never build a positive safety culture. People work, the human touch in workplace safety. Available everywhere on Amazon. To learn more, go to kevburns.com slash peoplework. When did it first happen that someone in a safety meeting held up a photo of a severed limb or an eye missing from an industrial accident as part of their talk about safety? I'll bet it was long before the onslaught of horror slasher films and violent video games that are pretty much commonplace today. And although these gruesome images don't have the same impact they did 30 years ago, they're still getting used. And all they were meant to do is to scare people into following rules by focusing on the consequences of wrong actions, not the benefits of right actions. It was, and still is, basic manipulation, fear, scare tactics, and guilt. All of the stuff that we look up to our supervisors and managers for, huh? I hope you get my sarcasm in that last statement. Do you think that by using guilt, fear, and manipulation, your people can get a really good sense of how much they are cared for and valued? You know, once I was uh, attending a safety meeting, and after what I thought was a pretty decent meeting, the safety manager closed the meeting with a video of a workplace injury. It had all the hallmarks of an old-school unsafety video. Guy laying on the floor unconscious, worried and teary-eyed spouse lumping your throat admissions. You know, the usual suspects. But then something happened. At the end of the 20-minute video, an employee raised his voice and asked why they were shown that video, but he didn't wait for an answer. Instead, the employee pointed out the faults of the video. The story was 20 years old, the regulations had changed, their own corporate safety manual wouldn't allow any of the behaviors. He sat in his chair and voiced his displeasure at being forced to sit through something that insulted their ability, their teamwork, and their commitment to safety. And all the heads around him nodded in agreement. Safety has to get a new tactic. They've got to get past the lazy effort of downloading anonymous internet photos of injury and guilt and fear-inducing videos and don't do what he did stories of workplace injury because it doesn't work. Scaring people straight may work for troubled teens when they visit prisons, but fear and guilt are no way to honor mature adult employees with families at work. Your people deserve so much better than that, don't they? You know, it's ironic that you'll hold your spouse and your children in your arms and you'll tell them that you'll love them and care about them deeply, but then you force your good people who you also care about to instead sit through gut-wrenching sessions of fear and guilt. Do you think that's an effective way to let your people know how much they are valued and cared for? Look, if you wouldn't do it at home, don't do it at work. You're never going to convince your people that you value them when you force them to sit through stomach-churning videos and stories. If you really do care, you won't use scare tactics and guilt and manipulation. So stop it. Now, don't for a second think, I don't know what you're really hoping to do. You're hoping that people will see the best in safety by viewing the worst. But it's not a straight line. Seeing what not to do, and that's the best you can hope for from these images and stories, it's not a clear plan for the actual actions to take. What not to do is not an actionable step. Lots of employees have been affected by the loss of a co-worker, and we learn from these events. We develop new procedures and processes as a result, but we don't have to relive the experience again and again for years after. When one of our own gets hurt, the best way to honor them is in improving how we do safety. The attention we pay to it, the choices we make both on and off the job, and buying into the ways that safety actually helps improve our lives. I've spoken to many audiences during corporate days of remembrance. I give kudos to the companies who honor their deceased employees with days of remembrance. They turn a tragic thing into something positive. They create scholarships and bursaries and awards in the names of the employees. These events and awards honor lives, not accidents, because it's people who really matter after all. Focus on how your safety program makes things better. Let go of the need to scare your people into compliance. That's old school, and it's what those who lack leadership skills do. It's, it's easy, it's lazy, it's just not terribly effective. 
Resist the temptation to download internet videos and photos to shock your people into compliance. That's not leadership. In fact, it's particularly bad management. It's negative, and negativity is never uplifting. It's demotivating, and it drives down morale. Instead, where skill and talent are needed is in bringing everyone together to work toward a common goal, not to avoid a failure. Downloaded internet videos and photos are an easy time filler, but it's lazy and it undermines a positive safety message. They'll fill time but send the wrong message. You can't use negative tools to create a positive safety culture. So what do you do instead? Well, here are three positive strategies you can start to implement immediately to take your safety culture in a more positive direction. Number one, remove the negative. Scour your PowerPoint slides and remove the gruesome and over-the-top pictures of accidents and dismemberments and especially the Darwin Awards. Do your walkthroughs everywhere in the workplace and look for posters or photos or anything that could be considered of shock value or those items that are focused on injury. Make this strategy a priority to complete as soon as possible. You don't want to undermine your own positive message while sticking a negative slide in the middle of your positive safety meeting presentation. That's number one, remove the negative. The number two, reverse engineer the do nots. Now, look through your messaging, your slides, even the signage in the workplace for the words stop, don't, and never. Then, once you assess what you want your people not to do, reverse engineer it into what you actually want them to do. No one ever goes to the grocery store with a list of things of not to buy. Give your people clear instruction, goals, and objectives. It's easy to follow a well thought out plan with a defined goal and objective, but it's impossible to succeed with only instructions of what not to do. Number two, reverse engineer the do nots. And then finally, number three, and this may be the toughest one of all, tell them they matter. Yes. This is an action step, and it's the hardest work you will do, but it's the work that separates leaders from mediocre managers. This is one-on-one -on -one at its best. Don't stand at the front of the room in a meeting and claim that people matter if you won't tell them they matter one-on-one, -on -one. because if you don't do it one-on-one, -on -one, they don't really matter, do they? If you trust your people, admire their ability, and find the work easier with them there, then tell them. Let them know that they matter to you. Don't assume they know. Assume they don't. And even if they do know, tell them again. Number three, tell them they matter. Safety leadership isn't a title or a certification. It's a set of values and principles and an example. Leaders go first. That's why they're called leaders. So. Go first. Open the communication. Make people feel valued. There are a whole lot more tips and strategy to help you make your people feel valued as well as a complete strategy to improve your safety communications. You'll find it all in great detail in the book, People Work, The Human Touch in Workplace Safety.